Hi everyone, let's begin. So, let's begin from my introduction. My name is Alexey Igrichev. I work at Pelark, a company that provides DevOps SRE as a service. We offer consulting services, and most significantly, we build, maintain, and enhance client infrastructure and related processes ourselves. Within the company, I lead an R&D team that focuses on the delivery to Kubernetes. We codify experience and best practices in close collaboration with our DevOps teams. Our company contributes a lot to open source and develop our in-house solutions, and most of them have already been open sourced. And that enables us to deliver high-quality service and scale our business. Verve is one of such tools, and I will talk about it today. Let's begin. What Verve is about? But now some numbers about Verve. We have been developing and using Verve in production for seven years. Currently, we have more than 5,000 active client applications and use Verve. Since December, Verve has been a CNCF sandbox project. And the last point is about our community. What Verve is? First of all, Verve is a toolbox. It's a CLI tool that covers a wide range of tasks related to the container image lifecycle, application testing, deployment, and distribution. One of the key highlights of Verve is its advanced features for building and deploying applications. It includes a built-in builder, build DAG, and extended helm to provide additional capabilities and functionality. And of course, Verve is a glue that brings together different components of the delivery process and simplifies work with them. Verve automates numerous tasks, streamlining the CD workflow and facilitating efficient management of these components. So, what for? Verve provides building blocks for use in your CI CD pipelines and implementing consistent and efficient delivery to Kubernetes, both when you use in a single CI CD pipeline and in scenarios with isolated environments. Let's look at how it is used there. Verve can be used not only for building CI CD, but also for local and in cluster development. In the context of CI CD, Verve can be used for building tagging and publishing images, running source code and application testing in Kubernetes, deploying temporary environments such as review and dev, deploying persistent environments, production-like and production. If we talk about isolated environments, in such a scenario, Verve can be used for the application distribution at the last step of the dev pipeline, and then deploy it in an isolated environment. In the last step, in addition to Verve, there are other solutions. This highlights the possibility of implementing hybrid approach where the user can receive the benefits of each solution. The introduction is over and we can move forward to the central part of the presentation. I would like to talk about the pra practical CICD cases and highlight some of the interesting Verve features. The first part is about the container image lifecycle. In this part, I will touch on such topics as how to make a build efficient and deterministic, and we'll talk about the container layer caching management, how to do tagging and promote container images across all environments. Here, we will talk about our approach. And last one, how to not think about the container registry and what is stored there. Here, we will talk about our container registry cleanup approach. So, let's start, and start from the beginning. Let's recall how caching works when we build images locally with Docker. So, we have the following Docker file and start the build. Docker builds container image layer by layer running Docker file instructions. The build is successful and we have a built image. When we rebuild, everything will be taken from the local cache. Let's modify Gomote Gosam in the project and build the image again. This leads to the build of all layers from the corresponding one. When we rebuild, Everything will be taken from the cache. Nothing special. Yeah, it's basic. It shouldn't be special. Let's summarize properties that such build has. Layers are reused between builds. Cool. Layers are determined by the previous layer, Docker file instruction, and used files from the build context. Cool. Layers are read only, immutable. Docker is responsible for managing parallel builds and cache on the host. Also cool. They are nice properties, but but they only run per host and don't scale to a group of runners in CI CD. Move on. Let's look at one more scenario with Docker, image publication. In Docker, we have three options to do that. Build, 
push and tag. So build, tag and push. Here it is. The image is published to the container registry. Now we have enough context to see how the same is done with Verve. Start the process. Verve builds, tags and publishes an image for a layer into the container registry. Done. And this is done the same way for each layer. Then we run the same build, but on the arbitrary host. Yeah, arbitrary. Any host, on any hosts. It, as, as a result, nothing happens, because all the layers are already built and stored in the container registry. We don't push anything from the host, and don't pull from the registry. Nothing at all. In sum, layers are reused between all builds. Layers are determined on the same principle as with Docker. Layers are also immutable, and Verve coordinates the work of all builders. Let's talk about the image usage, what the synchronization process is, and how we can use images. The synchronization is performed within all Verve commands that require images during operation. After the synchronization, the command continues with the final image, which matches the content-based tag for the last layer. Thus, we propose to pass release artifacts through all steps and delivery environments. In such a scenario, the user does not, not need to think about tagging and in general about what is stored in the container registry. But why shouldn't users think about it? Because Verve can manage who the container image lifecycle. Here, we briefly look at our approach to cleaning up the container registry. Verve offers its approach to cleaning container registry, which takes into account images currently in use in Kubernetes and ones that are somehow related to developers' ongoing activities based on Git. When cleaning, Verve scans all used images in Kubernetes and ignores them. Verve knows what images were used on which commits and ignores them according to the selected key policies and removes the rest. That's all. With this, I end the part about the container image lifecycle. It was a small overview of the main feature Verve approaches. So, move on. The next part, and I will talk about the application deployment tracking. In this part, I will touch on such topics as how to wait an application to be ready during deployment, how to stop a failed deployment in a timely manner, how to make the deployment process transparent and verbose. Let's begin. And again, I would like to start this part by looking at what Helm can do in this context. But it's valid not only for Helm. Start from the first example. We have Helm and we deploy our application to Kubernetes. Let's run Helm upgrade command. Helm applies manifest to Kubernetes. Kubernetes applies manifest and tells Helm that manifests have been applied successfully. After that, the command completes successfully. Cool, but we need more, yeah? Because we want to know when the application is ready. The second example, Helm has a wait option that allows us to wait until the application becomes ready. After the manifests are applied, Helm starts checking the readiness of the application. And when the application is ready, the command completes successfully. But, Helm does not guarantee that the application is ready, because it's based only on the status of the main resources in Kubernetes. But to be honest, Helm tracking is usually enough for simple scenarios. The third example. Let's talk about timeout here. After applying the manifest, the command will exit if the application is ready, or if the timeout has expired. Application crashed, yeah, and we wait for the timeout. Wait, wait. The application crash, cr crashed a long time ago, but we have to wait for the timeout. A logical question here is what timeout to set for deployment. If you estimate it too low, the deployment may fail too quickly, even before it has a chance to make progress. If you estimate it too high, the deployment will have to wait a long time. You have to decide between two bad options. And the last example. Again, the same steps. Wait and wait, and we are waiting and don't know what's happening with our, our application for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah? And we have to go to the cluster and check the status ourselves. 
because Helm doesn't show any log. Let's look at what Verve has to offer. So, we run Helm and Verve simultaneously and do the same task. Uh huh. We have application logs and progress. You can see the desired state for each resources in status. Uh huh. Okay, we have an error. Okay, it's crash loop back off. Okay. Okay. Verve gives a try. Okay, the comment is terminated. And we have all Kubernetes events that happened during the deployment. We have enough information to start fixing the problem. And we do that. Yeah, fix it. And again, deploy and... Yeah. It's done, it's done, cool, let's fix it. And what's about Helm? Helm waits for a timeout. It's set to one minute. By default, Helm has a five minute timeout. So it's even bigger than current one. And yeah, the command is terminated with an error. Timeout, out, waiting for the condition. It doesn't help us in troubleshooting and we start looking for answers in Kubernetes. Um, that's, a, that's enough, I think, yeah. You fix the bug here. So. And one more example, it's successful deployment. Yeah, the same command, same chart. Yeah, we have logs, need container logs, status progress, yeah, application logs. Yeah, and done. That's how it looks. Helm and Verf. So, move on. Summary of application deployment tracking. Uh, so, what have we done in the context of the application deployment tracking? Smart waiting for resources to become ready. Verf has generic tracking for all resources that is based on the information about the resource available in the cluster. Then, instant termination of a failed deployment, not only timeout. Verf does fail fast based on events in the cluster. Deployment progress logs system events and application errors. Verve gives enough information for troubleshooting and just for observability. And the last one, configurable behavior for each resource. All of the above you can configure for, for each resource. That's all. And one more thing. It's application distribution concept of bundle and usage scenarios. We suggest using bundle for the application distribution. With a bundle, you can pack the application state, Helm chart, and its associated images for future deployments. A bundle is a distribution format that follows a specific structure for organizing Helm charts. Essentially, a published bundle is just a chart stored in a CI repository along with its images. So, Bundle usage scenarios. The published bundle can be copied from one container registry to another, as well as unloaded and uploaded into the container registry. In this case, the Helm chart and associated images are packed into a TAR archive. The published bundle can be deployed using Verif, Helm, Argo CD, Flux, and other solutions that support working with the Helm charts from the ACI repository. So, such way we recommend to solve problem of deploying in isolated environments. And that's all. If the problem seems familiar to you, try, will, try Verve. It will be easy and quick to start using Verve and um, benefits have benefits in your CI CD. Create your Docker files and Helm charts and let Verve handle all the rest. Take a moment and give us a star if you like it. That's all. I hope it was useful. Thank you, Thank you so much, Alexei. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Don't be shy. <laughs> I would maybe ask one question, uh, how people can contribute to Verve? 
Are you looking for some specific contributions, kind of contributions? Yeah, we have uh, documentation and guides, and we would like to have any help in this direction. Yeah, Verf is fully open source. It's CNCF sandbox project, and you can follow our roadmap and help us with this. One more chance to ask question. No? Okay. So thank you so much, Alexei, and thank you for joining. And we will start shortly with uh, another session. Thank you. Thank you, guys.